top of the uh, morning no evening to you folks by the way how's it going everybody uh hope you're doing well hope you're better doing better than that intro which is a battle so far but uh we're gonna keep going with it um we're happy to have you here this is a golf show mostly but we talk about a lot of things including uh other sports some some business some commerce some even some bitcoin now and then uh so thanks for tuning in if you've been enjoying it you know what to do give us a quick like faster subscribe all you need is a, G a gmail account and uh we really appreciate it so drums let's do this thing five four three two one what is up ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the kingdom as per usual, my name is drums and i'm joined by the brothers behind king golf regan and jordan headley as we always do we'll head up north see what's going on with our boy reg how you doing buddy What's up, suckers? Yo. It's a uh, Wednesday that feels like a, a Tuesday today, so it's it's kind of a bonus week with the short week. I had uh, it pegged Thursday all day. Yeah, I don't know. It's a weird oh. – these these uh, long weekends really mess with the guy, but definitely wouldn't trade him. Um, got into Winnipeg on the weekend, went to uh, Thermia for the day on Saturday. It was supposed to be our wedding day that day, so we, we cruised in there and went there. Roads were absolutely shit the entire way in and we had to sh we stayed at uh easton's mom's friend's house we had to shovel the driveway twice because they weren't home like it just kept snowing for like it seemed like an eternity um and we, funny story just quick here have you guys been to uh the king's king's head pub so <laughs> me and East thought we, ago, did it yeah did they have a couple pool it. tables and shit and like a yeah. higher level there yeah. 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 Been there. So we went there. We just thought like we finished up at Thermia and we wanted to go for like uh we were both kind of hungry, so we wanted to go for supper and a couple of beers. <laughs> well, we we went into that place. We thought it was like an Irish pub and we and that and it's probably like that place you're at in uh in PEI drawer where it's a nice place to eat supper and then all of a sudden it just turns absolutely haywire and just like there's people <laughs> everywhere. So like I drove downtown, I wasn't drinking and I I drove downtown and uh we go in there. And it's just like, I don't know, man. I don't know if it's COVID that's kind of got us a little edgy too, but like there was people everywhere. Me and East were both just dead ass sober, like trying to walk through this bar with all these young kids. And it was weird. We we lasted probably like three minutes and we both walked out. <laughs> we, we went to a Browns closer to her house, but it was pretty, uh, I don't know. I don't know if we're getting older, if COVID's messed us up. It was pretty weird, weird experience. What do you mean? Like they were just getting after it and you wanted to know part of it? Well, there's a live band. Like we were trying to, we went, oh. we went there for food, and like it would be a sweet place if you're, if you're drinking. But like as a pub, or it, like even if you're just getting going to. Yeah, so I, I think that it turns into like like it's a restaurant, and then all of a sudden the live band comes on, and it just goes like, well, there was like three le three levels of people, and it was just packed. Like it was, it was good to see, but also I it was not a good place to be sober. A beer, bro. Yeah, step into it. Tough. tough to go from zero to 60 when you gotta drive home why yeah cabs there <laughs> whatever Jor, what's going on buddy top of the evening to you folks and work. you guys got her i got that one right <laughs> um i'm doing well i had uh i got a whole chilada bar set up here to my right um had a what's it called spence bros pizza our unofficial unpaid sponsor of the show and uh i'm feeling pretty good it was, it was a nice day today because we didn't have to shovel it seems like this is the most insane cold and snow winter of all time i think we say that every episode but it's the damn truth here i don't remember anything like this the snow banks on the side of my driveway are up to my head yeah so nice. when you have to throw snow that high it's just like bananas but Anyways, I'm wanting it to end, but it just doesn't seem like it's ever going to. Like, of all the winters that could, this could have happened, like, why this one? You know, I don't know. Like, usually doesn't February start at least getting, like, single digits at the end? Yeah, and we're know. minus 45. I've, it's I've honestly, burning. I've never been in a, in a car when it's so cold that if you turn, like, the the signal light on, like, it, it takes a little bit of extra effort to get the signal handle to go up. <laughs> and like I was trying to change like the volume control on my steering wheel, and it was just like it was moving Delayed. so slow, like it was it was unbelievable, man. I don't know. 
it's it's been so cold too it's insane yeah we're ready to get out of uh, we are ready for sure we're not too far away from the summer here but uh uh what else was i gonna say rigo uh we gotta say on behalf of me and drums uh sorry for tearing into you i know drums uh said sorry last episode to you but uh watch the show to do the editing i guess we don't really edit anymore but we got to make sure we don't say anything real stupid so i watched it and uh we did we did unnecessarily tear into you for that roof and uh <laughs> so sorry for that i mean it's not like i think it was a good idea i think it's cool the way it was done like whatever <laughs> we're pretty, hard. Done. We we're pretty it. hard on you we lost it anyways that's enough for me actually before before we get to drums uh tonight we have quite a bit going on um Lot, there seems to be tons going on in the world of PGA, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about tonight a little bit, I guess. Little we're going bit. to talk about the Phil. We're going to talk about the Saudis. Uh, Rigo's got a cool story about Rory that he's going to share, and our housekeeping stuff. I think we got some random shit in there. And then at the end of it, we got our segments. So Rigo uh, helps us save a couple strokes on the course. Drums give us some entertainment recommendations, whether that's Netflix, Prime, music, and uh, two pina coladas teaching you how to escape the system later in the show <laughs> drums what's up with you buddy not much man same thing i'm getting absolutely sick of the cold uh i did get uh from amazon today i ordered a uh a club regripping kit so i got that i got a couple wedges oh, did you that i'm lining up to do that new wedge i got like i can't even grip the goddamn thing taylor made i will say this about taylor made the grips are off i can't stand them so I gotta switch my gotta yeah, switch my are. wedges up at least. Uh, they are. Why is that? Why is that? Because all my teramies I have I regripped automatically. I didn't even use it for a round. Yeah, like I'm not. I can't, I can't hold this goddamn thing. I'm not using it's it for weird. a round. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird. And then I've had my Nike grips for eight years. Same grips. Doesn't make any sense. Anyway, sorry, drums. Keep going. Uh, I need you guys to help me solve a house debate here. Okay. Yes. When you guys go get gas, do you stay in the car till it's done? Or do you yes. hop out and go inside? I stay. Actually, Honestly, I don't even go inside anymore, but I did stay in my car. Depends how I'm feeling. A lot of the times I'll go in. If I see if I see somebody that I, I know in there, like I'll just get out of my car and go bullshit inside for a bit. But but you wait in your if car. I'm with if I'm with Easton, I would wait in my car. I thought I was completely right about this, but I'm 0 for 3 with Liz and you two. Holy shit. Well, I know I, I I go in, I'm saying, if I'm alone. Oh, well, I go in, like, even when she, if she's in the car. Like, I get the fuck out of there quick. <laughs> <laughs> they, they hit the pump. You don't have to worry about freaking Crazy. putting things on your face. Uh, I want to ask our listeners, too. Reach out. What do you do? I got a poll. Yeah, that's yeah, a good that's, poll, actually. I got to throw it on a poll. I don't think I you know, win this. You don't think I'm winning? <laughs> Fuck, I like I didn't think it was. What do you okay? Think else. about this, drums. What do you do when you're in a gas do you do, station? They, you just search for peanuts or what? Like, what do yeah, you do? What do you do in the car? Just fucking sit there? Like, what's the difference? You freeze your ass off in the car, you go inside and it's nice and warm. Well, usually Honestly, your, your car's probably, not cold. Go converse with I'd people. probably go save say over hi. a hundred. <laughs> I'd save over a hundred per year if I just stayed in my car. <laughs> That's probably true. easy, easy hundy. I'm like, oh, they came up with this new. New flavor of spits. Oh, Red Bulls are two for four. Okay, well, <laughs> gotta buy those. Get a uh, koala cone of candy while I'm at it for the car. Uh, I'm, I'm of, bad. Uh, my budget of Charleston Chew would go down for sure if I never went in <laughs> again. But <laughs> man, random, completely random. But when we went ice fishing that day in that sweet shack, um, Rick Shaw was there, like funniest guy on earth. And we were talking about Charleston too. And I said, it's like, I said, it's, oh, he's absolutely hilarious. But I said, I love Charleston too. And it's frozen. I haven't had it for such a long time. Doesn't he go to his truck and pull some out of the glove box and bring it in? (laughs) Unbelievable. That's unreal. That's a great move. What flavor? (laughs) (laughs) Has to be vanilla. There's no other Mm -hmm. flavor. Is there even chocolate? Chocolate. There is chocolate, but it's not. That's junk. I think there was actually strawberry at one time. But not full way frozen. You need it like half frozen, like where it's just yeah. the chocolate's just frozen. Well, as soon as you put it in your mouth, as soon as it's out of the freezer for 10 seconds, it's like, okay. Phenomenal. Beautiful. 
Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you guys got to get, you guys gotta get on Big Turks too. A little halfway oh. frozen Big Turk. Oh my God. Fuck Big Turk. So Isn't it, what's in it? What's it all about? It's like a jujube -jube in chocolate. What? I don't, I'm not crazy about that mixture, honestly. I don't feel, I don't think I'd be into that either, to be honest. So with good. You. So good. You can get many ones that are even better, like little wee Just ones. A couple jubers in there. Pop a bunch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's get into housekeeping because we got a lot to talk about tonight and uh our shows have been running a little bit long unintentionally of course um so we're gonna try to keep this one clear and concise so uh what do you got rigo tell us one tell us one of your housekeeping items oh well, i i told you guys before the show that i listened uh to our podcast for the first time in about a year um <laughs> so i got a couple of you blew it that's about all i got for housekeeping tonight uh just actually, Jory, you said don't follow a bad shot with a good one. It's a pretty tough strategy. But you said that during my uh, <laughs> my stroke saver. <laughs> and then uh, we, were t we were talking about the rodent, the groundhog, and you guys call it a rodent. Uh, so I guess <laughs> one saw his shadow and and one died apparently according to Easton students. She like said today it died. Like the no, the student said when it came out of the hole it died. Like at a jam or something. Die? Died. Somebody shoot it? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it got it got panicked. <laughs> Maybe and, and it died. So that, that was her story. Like, is that legitimate? Uh, that's what her students say. So it came from kids. It's probably well, not right. Fuck, I believe kids over news. That's actually what I had written down. That's like, <laughs> but I did I didn't <laughs> want to go there, so I just left it. <laughs> <laughs> What are you talking about? The media has our best interests in mind. They tell the truth about every story. And anyways, uh, what else you got? They're here for the people. Up. Don't get into this. <laughs> um, I got a couple here, so I'll t I'll do a couple ones and then drums up. Do you have any? Not housekeeping, no. Okay. Well, yesterday was a huge day in the world. It was Tuesday. Whoa. February oh, I didn't think 22nd, about Tuesday. 2022, on a Tuesday. And this was a special day for a lot of reasons. But Pluto made its return to its original birthplace. However a planet is born, it made its return to its original spot. The last time it was in the spot was 246 years ago. And uh, on that day, believe it or not, it was uh, July 4th, 1776 which uh, for anybody who is into history, it was uh, the date that Americans signed the Declaration of Independence. And that was part of the American Revolution during that time. So kind of, uh, I don't know. 1776. Oh, Jesus Christ. 246 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> so that, that's pretty cool. I thought that that was awesome. Um, second one I'll touch on quickly is drums. You mentioned... Uh, uh, Teddy swims a couple weeks ago on the podcast. The Shania Twain uh, have to. Um, we listened to it right away, but we haven't talked about it on the podcast. And uh, it's it's found its way onto the number one playlist on my phone. So it's a it's a good song if that happens. He's actually got a bunch of Unreal covers. And uh, he does, couple, hey, what's that? Bed on fire or something? Is that one? That's a good. That's like his own song. And nine one one is a good uh, like his own track. But yeah, he's got a bunch. Like every cover he's done, I think I like his version better. I will say I like Shania. It's hard to beat Shania. Like that's a all time classic. He does a pretty good job of it, but I think if I had a gun to my head, I'd still pick Shania. But he did a hell of a job for a guy singing that song because it's hard for guys to sing Kills female it. songs. And then yeah. when you see him, just a he's a yeah. big unit. He's a big boy. He kind of looks like Chris Stapleton. Eh? Those guys seem to have big voices. He's got, he does uh, he does a really good cover of Tennessee Whiskey. Hmm. I think, like you said, he does a bunch of covers. And I was just on Apple Music, and I'm, I'm guessing that lots of them aren't on there. Like, is lots of stuff you listen to on YouTube or what? Yeah, like all the covers will be on YouTube. Okay. Because that, like, the Shania, the Shania sure. song was on there, but uh, that was that was really the only cover I could see that I recognized. So yeah, like he must have sense paid. On YouTube. He must have paid for that one to get released. Huh. Or or the rights ran out from the the label record label that's what usually happens i have to wait for it to like expire yeah but you're not gonna people can start doing it you're not gonna let it expire like that song none of shania's catalog you let expire 
Why not? So, Why would you give that up? I mean, what does it hurt? What do you mean, what does it hurt? There, she's not going to lose money on her songs. If anything, people will listen to that song and then like switch over to hers and she'll get more views on it or more listens to it. Right. Like, so she, somebody authorized it, like whoever owns the catalog, like uh, authorized it, so with the record label, whatever it was. But like, they wouldn't let, like, there's no time. Like, if, like, what do you mean it expired? Like, the time ran out on them. Like, they're, the um, their intellectual property on the song, like the lyrics. Yeah, I don't it. think it, I don't think that like there's a time frame. Mm. And also like, why know. would you let it expire? Like you can keep Lots it. of people do. Cause what, why keep it? They have to pay to renew it or whatever. Anyway, yeah, if, if we don't know, we don't have the money, answer. So. <laughs> no, 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 no. She, she won't lose money off of it. I don't know what you're meaning now. I don't know. We'll look into it. Rigo, Rigo bring this to the it. next day. But... I, yeah. I have a uh, your head. <laughs> well, uh, Joaquin Neiman won on the weekend. Um, Did he ever? So I, I read an article. Just it was basically he went home, hey, for like a couple months before this. Like this was the first event he played this year, I believe. First or Is second he from Spain, uh, Chile. So he went hey. home and they, he he says that he likes to go because he's young, hey, like really young. Yeah, and. Uh, they said that he likes to go home because he gets like, like he just gets homesick and he needs to go. So he, he went there for like two months and they, they said, so what, like, what do you and your friends like to do when you go back home? Like, what are some of the things you, you catch up with? <laughs> it was just, it just said whatever it says in Chile. And then it just says party, 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 like three <laughs> exclamation marks. So he just went and got pissed for like two months at home and, and uh, got back in the right mindset and came back and won the tournament. And like, absolutely ripped apart the Riviera like I don't know how but he Nobody's just played there. just played average like the last day and a half though right but the first two days were absolutely insane holy shit yeah he, like, was, he was minus 20 after yeah he was 16 after the first two days the first two days yeah unreal insane you, you talk about mental health you gotta you have to consider how important that is for a lot of these guys to be on the road all the time, especially guys for like him. He, I don't think that he was ever a real breakout player. So it's not yeah, like he, he yeah, was he? Like, yeah. I think he's yeah, only he, 23. He still or had to put like in that. his like, time, though, young. like in terms of playing a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, he can't just show up to tournaments yeah, he wants right. to, is kind of what I'm saying. Um, um, so, but, how important would that be to hang out with your buddies and just have fun and just completely reset your mind? Like, like they totally even touched underrated on the tour. They touched on that on the on the broadcast or something I was reading anyways after um, that a lot of like the South America guys like they'll all get a house together and have like as much of family and friends around them as they can just to feel at home right like that's yeah. big in that culture is just being surrounded in big groups so like they all travel and party and drink he, and he has together. a group that he stays with right yeah it's like uh, Sergio him and Sergio are big. Him and Sergio and Carlos, Carlos Ortiz, I think. Yeah. Um, and Rom there's one sometimes, more. Or Rom used to when, before maybe he got married and whatever. But yeah, I think there's like six or seven guys. Sebastian, Sebastian Munoz, I think. God, how fun is oh, that? Oh, God. Be? Tough life. But that's They're not that fun. Take it back to F1. Uh, what do you call it? Like, same thing. Yeah. Like, he had. I was uh, just thinking that. Yeah. He had his family all around. His mom and him, brothers and sisters there. there. Yeah. The Red Bull guy. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and the uh, McLaren guy too. What was he called? I'm terrible with names. Anyways, wasn't he Carlos too? Carlos, he's McLaren. Carlos Sainz. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, speaking well, of when, one, when does that come quick. back? Yeah, when does that come back? Well, March 10th is the is the uh, series in Australia. It starts, it's yeah, it starts in like uh, the end of March, I think. But like they released today was the first showing of like the new cars. Mm -hmm. I was watching Did you see some of those. I was watching honestly for the past week. I've been watching like an hour a night of YouTube videos just on the cars. Holy, I don't Which know how we got favorite? here. I have no clue how we got here. <laughs> like the technology and shit, or what? No, like how I'm like oh, looking up the car. I, I was you. on formula1.com today. I've never been on there before. <laughs> <laughs> it's like texting Stike all this stuff. Like, check out how cool this car is. Like, what? <laughs> Flash that back two years. <laughs> I never even knew what F1 was, really. 
Yeah, I was chirping okay. about it. Two, two more housekeeping things here. One, really quickly. I've been meaning to bring this up on the podcast for a while, but it's never... I just keep forgetting to do it. So anyways, there's this guy on TikTok. You guys might have heard of him by now. He's, he's kind of like a big deal. But his, his name's Old Time Hockey. Have you heard of him? No. Oh, man. Okay, let me just explain quickly what he is, and then people have to check out themselves. But he's like this – he's a hockey player, obviously. He's probably about our age, I would say. It seems like he just kind of lives in the woods. He had a dog. It's like a, um Australian Shepherd. Just got another puppy like two weeks ago. So he has two Australian shepherds there. Um, and he just like makes food. It's like a comfort channel. So he'll make like a meal and like pretend to like share it with you or whatever. And so he makes like the coolest um, meals. They're, they're super easy to make, like almost rink food kind of deal, like mm. comfort food. And uh, he has like an uh, N64 there just on a little wee TV and uh, just like super cool. So it's, it's just... Uh, it's good for your mental health. I just like watching it. It makes me laugh and smile and um, hard to find stuff like that on the internet. So it's old time hockey and hockey spelled H A W K E Y. And he got sponsored by, I think Bauer picked him up, but Nike Bauer. And he was at the all-star game a couple months ago. And so oh, right he has oh, nice. millions of followers and he's just like, it's a, uh, it's a pretty cool channel. So if you have time, check it out. And finally, the, <laughs> Uh, Ross Sheard was here yesterday. He dropped off something. His his dad wants some iron covers for uh, <sighs> King Golf. So he ordered some uh, some for like a template for us to use off of Amazon. And so he dropped it off yesterday. And here it is. So it's actually kind of cool. It's an iron cover. But the best part about it is on the other side, it says puppy. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know. Whoever is somebody had like a nickname puppy or it's like a Chinese like brand or something. It's puppy. <laughs> 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 so we got to make his dad some uh, some iron covers. We're going to try them out. Who knows? We, we all know how everybody feels about iron covers and I'm the same way. But uh, his dad wants them. So you got to. I don't know. I kind of depend. Like, I think there's an age. There's an age you can get to where kind of cool. That I'm not gonna lie. You a a whole bag full of those. You you kind of look pretty pimp. Yeah, I know. Like the old ones they used to have were like styrofoam, like rip. Well, like you know, there's like plastic ones where you got to flip a tab and open the goddamn thing. Yeah, but still, you can't. You can't have. You can't have them if you're. under 63. It's a good age. <coughs> it's a good, why, that's why a fair, 63, fair not point. 60. Well, just because you're 60, you're still a pimp. But three years after that, yeah, 63, you get, you're not? No. Ooh, dad's not going to like that. He's not 63. Oh, you're he is 63. <clears throat> yeah, my that's we're gonna get. That's so we're going to get dad for his birthday's iron covers. Poppy. I'll get the rest <laughs> of these from Roscoe. I'll give him the poppy set. <laughs> For those, okay, you got one last bit uh, of housekeeping. You got a shotgun here. Oh, I do. Okay, so that was for we all actually had pretty good picks. Drums, you had a hell of a pick, correct? T2, baby. Did he finish second? Yeah, T2 almost got his head taken off, and uh, he had a hell of a weekend. Hey, I I didn't follow it on the weekend. I was calling, gone, but did I you see that the picture of him? Uh, Friday. Taking pictures of his family afterwards, yeah, is like shoot shoot the course record and then have to take uh, still have to answer down for your girlfriend. For yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good for him because I would not do that. And Rigo also had uh, pretty. Actually, all of us made the cut. Just Sunny was at the bottom of the. I pack. think Rory finished Who's like tenth. Yeah, I think he finished tenth. Solid. Sorry, boys. I'm trying to get this. Done. I actually bet see- on him on uh, after Thursday's round, but on course, they didn't all avail. Yeah. Did you see the video of uh, Morikawa walking up on the tee box while JT's hitting? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was pretty close. Where was that? Huh? Cheers to uh, Cheers to Sunny here, boys. It was on the weekend. It was on Saturday. Oh, actually, that was like mid round in the tournament. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Did you see his reaction? Yeah. Sorry, sorry, oh, sorry, man. 
Sorry, man. No one is sitting on the table though. He's like, ah, felt so bad. Out of boy, way to go. Feeling good? Feeling great? Struggling? No, he's just letting out a big burp. That's all. Correct. Um, I was kind of so, hoping you yak right there for. As you had the gun, <laughs> you get uh, first choice this first week. pick. Who you okay. got? I'm going with uh, what's the tournament this weekend? The Honda. Honda. I'm a huge fan of Honda. Always have been, and uh, ever since they started, Red Bull started using their cars. I've been even more of a fan. So <laughs> Honda, great, great company. I'm gonna go with Doc Redman. Uh, the the nice. field is a little bit weak. This this uh, Honda Classic. So, um, and he's had some good finishes lately. He's kind of hanging around the T20, T30. So. He might have a breakout. I remember a couple years ago in one of these smaller tournaments, he had a really good turnout, or maybe it was last year. But anyways, Docker Edmund, good guy. Reggie. I'm gonna go good with name uh, too. I'm gonna go with uh Mido Pereira. The guy from no Netflix that knew, nobody knew about, so I did a little bit of research on him before. Turns out Mido is just his nickname. His real name's actually Gilermo or Guillermo. Guillermo. From Chile also. Guillermo. So, they say oh, Guillermo on the uh, on this one show that I watch, Spanish. Is but, that the same show uh, with Seamus Power? Money <laughs> Heist. Anyways, <laughs> he's from Chile. He this is his first year on tour, and he has been absolutely dialed. Like, if you check his stats, he's got two missed cuts, but he's been like really impressive, like inside the top twenty in a lot of events. So. That's my pick. We'll see. Drums. Shane Lowry. Ooh. Shane, big Drums. boy. I looked at him. I looked him off, and I thought, man, Shane might have a good weekend. He's always a, he's always in the mix, eh? He's always somewhat in the mix, and he uh, he needs to pop off in the States here. So let's go get it, big boy. I like it. I Mike's like Mike Lowry's brother. <laughs> Prison Mike? Mike Lowry. Is that Adam Lowry's brother? No, it's Kyle Lowry's brother. Dave's son? Yeah. A lot of Lowry's. Is there ever? Okay, well, uh, we got some stuff later on. We got our segments, but we're going to touch, uh, as Regal likes to say, back to golf. Uh, some PGA stuff. We got some controversy, a lot of controversy. I would argue that this is the most controversy we've had in a while, especially between players. You don't often see this kind of stuff. So it's been interesting to take in. Um, Rigo, fire us up. Maybe just give us a quick situation of what's going on, and we'll chime in maybe throughout. So, Alan Shipnuck, who is part of the Fire Pit Collective, which features our guy Monday Q Info, um, has a book being released soon. May. In May, but he was trying to hold back, trying to hold back, but the stuff that Phil said in an interview with him about the Saudis kind of rubbed in the wrong way and he had to get it out there. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, let's pause for a second. Cause like at this stage last week, it was like, this is happening a hundred percent. We kind of knew we had a good idea of who was going to be involved. Um, there was more DJ. guys. Yeah. Like there was more guys kind of as the day each day, uh, more names yes, were kind of coming Racing. to light. And then it was Walter. like Wednesday hit and shit hit the fan. Yeah, it was Poulter, Svens- or, uh, Stenson, and uh, Adam Scott were in it too, eh? Right. Uh, DJ, Bryson. And Bryson, yeah. Phil. Nuts. So this is what uh, – says, as the golf world faces questions about players potentially breaking off to join the SGL, which is the Super Golf League, which is backed by funding from Saudi Arabia, Mickelson drew ire for – indicating that he was willing to put the country's issues aside to do at very least gain leverage on the PGA tour. And he was quoted as saying they're scary motherfuckers to get involved with. <laughs> we know they killed Washington post reporter Jamal Khashoggi and have a horrible record on human rights. They execute people over there for being gay, knowing all of this, why would I even consider it? Because this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to reshape how the PGA tour operates. Which, okay, does does that make sense to you guys, his logic there, or no? Not at all. No? 
I mean, I don't, lo- I don't believe it. I can, I can connect the dots to get the logic to work, but I honestly don't believe that's what his intentions were at all. So he's basically saying like, <clears throat> he knows who's involved and, but he still wants to, he wants the PGA to change so much that he's going to see past that. Because Again, this to, and this is also the richest guy on tour. Right. But what I'm saying is, like, he's not asking for more. I mean, did he call the PGA greedy or something recently? Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah. But to me, it's he sounds like he's trying to make change happen in the PGA, not for, not for money. But that's what I gather from that. What, what his true intentions are, I don't know. But that's, like, specifically from that quote. It's saying that he wants to see the PGA change, as we all do. Right, but he and, he literally hasn't said that at all. Yeah, he has. Like, no, like, he never came out with that. Like, he's this is part of him telling this guy, which he says was off the record or whatever, right? But he's now, now his true intentions have come to light, and he's backtracking past that but he's already told this guy four months ago that this was his intentions i still think it's absolute bullshit i think that was just him trying to save face a bit so so what happened after that rigo like he's trying to save face on what i guess that was that was stipnik's uh original like um release right like and then phil came back with his statement just backtracking everything yeah, sorry, I got ahead of it. Yeah, so, man, I don't know. It's I've I've heard I read some other things on Phil today that he's got big time gambling problems, and that like he's already sold like his private plane that people close to him say was like his baby. his his baby to keep sick, and he sold it. So he's he's mad about about the PJ and how they control all the media. Right. So, right. Like, and all okay. the NFTs and like his big so thing, all is the money to made in NFTs right yeah. now. Yeah. So, okay. So pause there for a sec. Cause there's two important things to talk about there. One, what's with the NFTs? Like he, he knows the PJ is going to keep all the profits from future NFT sales, but the no, Saudis he's, are not going to. So what he's, what he's so also in this, uh, it comes out that Phil has basically written the game plan to get this and operate this entire league. He recru- he, uh, like he recruited, he didn't name names, but he said, I recruited a few top guys uh, to help me write this game plan of how the, the league's going to come to fruition and how the league's going to run. So he, he's in this, like he can't just, and then go and say, I'm just in it to, to fuck everybody over like you wrote the script of how this league is going to play out that's how deep he is in with the saudis but doesn't that check out in the sense that he actually wants to see change instead of just signing up for a paycheck <clears throat> it checks out but he also said he doesn't give a shit about what else is going on over there at all he just is using it as leverage and using the dirty saudi money as leverage to go against the pga which is wild and okay, people are twice. Yeah, so people are shitting more on his character for that than what his goal is. Right. Um, so my second question is, like, if, if Phil truly believes that the media controls or the PGA controls the media and well, maybe they do. vice versa in a sense, yeah. They do. There's no so way around it. Would, wouldn't it make sense that the media that we see right now are telling us how bad the Saudis are how bad Phil is with gambling. No, for real though. For real. No. Cause it, I mean, what, why, why not? Like, why would that not make sense? Like Phil was indicted for uh, basically like money laundering. I, I believe is how it basically broke down. Like it's well documented that, that he has very bad gambling problem and this, he is very bad with money. This book is about his life. Ship not because writing it about his life. Right. Like and there's like there's like, everything involved here. Like he's like mafia's involved. We got Saudi Arabia's involved. Like he is in some <laughs> deep shit. Oh yeah. And was trying to trying to come out of it however he could. 
So maybe that was how his scramble. But at the same time, he I, don't know. He, I think that things whole, tend to get blown out of proportion by no, but like, the media. Out of his mouth, he has like shit on the PGA this entire time. He shit on the commissioner repeatedly. Again, in his statement, he shit on the commissioner. Um, but basically, what Phil wants, all he I think all he actually wants is to control his uh catalog NFTs. of yeah, like his his video. So he can make NFTs which will give him money in the back. Which, what's wrong with that? That's nothing. like how it should be. Nothing. But if you're the There's league... There's nothing wrong with but that But if you're the all. league, why would you do that? They won't have a choice, I don't think. The, they league, do, the league can literally live off of whatever catalog they have for existence. I don't know. My, my opinion on this whole thing is like the, the media, as they usually do, blow things way out of proportion, get everybody on the side of who they want on their side. And this is, and that, but here's my prediction. I don't think that this thing's over. I think that there's a lot going on right now and some damage control. I think there's way too much energy into this thing, way too much money into this thing and way too many big names for it to just stop over something so stupid that it'll go on. For it's, sure still gonna, it it's still going to go on. Like they still have four or five dates or six this season that they're going ahead with. The big names are gone. If it's on next weekend, are you watching it? No. Not if those guys aren't there. Yeah, like if the big names aren't there, I will check it out. Yeah, I probably will watch the first one to see how it unfolds. But like we're a long way from uh, like big names when they're reaching out to Corn Fairy people. Like I'm not saying that's a bad thing or I not, guess. but, it, but it's, like, it's completely different than what we were talking about like a week ago. My big thing is like, um, Rigo, that article you sent today was like, the one thing I took away from it was the biggest losers out of this whole thing is the fans because competition is good. Why, why wouldn't, why didn't some, why doesn't somebody push the PGA? Because I mean, it's not so the, the, the game is growing at an exponential pace. Hey, nobody's mad at Phil for going against the PGA. They're mad at him for you for using the dirty Saudi money and saying he doesn't, he knows about everything that happens there and doesn't give a shit because he's going to use it for leverage. Uh, no, you guys are going to, you guys are going to get mad at me again for saying this, but the exact same shit happens in the U S and maybe not the killing gays and stuff, but the stuff that U S money is used for is disgusting for sure. And so, so we just don't know that though, because what we hear is controlled by the same people that, you know, but not sure. relevant to That's this all situation, I'm saying. Though. For sure. But not relevant to the situation. It's Absolutely. Not relevant. Is. Why no, isn't it relevant? Well, the nobody in the States knows about people. that. Like the PGA is not murdering people, What's but that? the people that are, the people that are doing this are murdering people. He knows that the Saudis are doing that. It's a, like, it's worldly known. I would be more on your side if it was the U S government that controlled the PGA, like happenings. It's the Saudi Arabian government that controls this league. Who controls the media? Yeah, like we're never going to get past this point then. All I'm saying is that like people are being made to believe that Saudis are like the dirty people, but like the U.S. government is the top of the dirty list, man. Totally so that, that's not all even I'm relevant saying. to this conversation. Though. Like not even like, how it's not because it's not the U.S. government running the PJ. It's not even it's not even the same. We're not talking about if the governments are corrupt. But how You're do we know Phil that the Saudi that. government is? Like, Drums is talking about Phil making a... a... <laughs> Drums is talking about Phil making a plan of how he wants the league to look. So how is the government involved in that? Or they're paying for it. <laughs> they're paying what for the mean? whole like, thing. The like money. They back the whole thing. I know. But there's people in bed with, you know, I don't know. All I'm for saying sure. is, yeah. Like I like we People only like, knew what happened with the U.S. government and the Canadian government too is just as bad. But yeah, but we're not talking about government like the U.S. government. We're talking about the PGA, which, on a small scale, probably operates very similar. That's all I'm saying. I'm sure. I don't know PGA, who's right or wrong here. I I'm don't pre- know. I'm pretty sure the the PGA isn't murdering uh, journalists. They probably want to. Who the PGA isn't? Yeah. For sure they aren't. So that's basically everybody's, I guess, 
point. One one people are murdering motherfuckers. The other yeah. side is not. All all that I'm saying in this whole discussion is that the the information that we get about our government and the U.S. government is not accurate, and the information that we get about the Saudi government is not accurate. It's all filtered, and it all comes how they want it to come to you. That's all I'm saying. I will side with you in the fact that, like, I do believe this entire thing is overblown quite a bit. Like, really, who gives a shit? Like, if there's another league, if you don't want to support it, don't fucking support it then. Like, whatever. But if you do, like, now everybody's scared to even mention the name because you, you're going to yeah, be no, that's what, whatever that's it is. What I mean. You're going like, to be canceled all this it. shit. Yeah. But That's kind of why I'm on that side of things is, like, I don't know. The, there's always more to the story that we don't know. And so what's, yeah, I don't know what, like, what's the PGA supposed to do? Like, obviously well, they're going to, they're going to go back it, at them and accuse them all this shit. Why would no, the they? PGA fucking walk, their whole... the, the PGA walks away. Like they don't mention uh, anything else. Phil won't be involved in the PGA going forward. And that's it. Right. Until, and then they're going to get in bed with the PGL and they're going to blow the Saudis out of the walk. Like, I think that's how it's going to happen. And I think that's what, like, I'm not saying I'm, I'm picking sides, but if I'm the PGA, that's exactly what I'm doing to fuck over the Saudis. Yeah. hundred percent with the premier guy. Yeah. Cause then at least you're involved with it. Mm-hmm. It'd be really interesting to know what exactly is going on behind the scenes with these players because even with that like the statements that they put out how does how does bryson go from like being the face of the saudi league to the next day putting out a statement saying that he's not going to do it? something happened there is what i'm saying yeah phil like somebody told bryson you need to shut this down because you we cannot have this league go any further than it is right now no because so the somebody story came to, out. is that what happened with bryson that's what happened with everything Like every big name, as soon as this happened, is out. He's dropped by all his major sponsors, or I guess the the one big one, KPMG or whatever it is. KPMG, yeah. And like there's talk that the rest are following suit. Like it's it's gonna get fucking ugly for Phil Mickelson. Workday dropped him too. Well workday sucks. (laughs) It comes right before the masters and he's getting rid of it. Oh yeah, big bag. Well, that was fun, (laughs) boys. Uh I wouldn't say so, but we have why? I mean, that's <laughs> because do you, do you want us to do you want us to agree on everything? In, no, but like, like we're that? not even done yet. Like that was just from Stipnik's comments. <laughs> well, let's proceed. Let's continue down this road. I yeah, I don't know. It's just there's a couple other guys like that are pissed at Phil. Like Rory's pissed. I mean, <laughs> Rory's been pissed what did, the entire time about. What did Rory say? Yeah, Rory's Rory back to PJ really... the entire time. Yeah, true. Right. He said, I don't want to kick someone while he's down, obviously, but I thought they were naive, I'm selfish, egotistical, egotistical, ignorant. A lot of words to describe the interaction he had with Ship Nook. It was just very surprising and disappointing. I'm sure he's sitting at home sort of rethinking his position and where he goes from here. And then he said, who's, who's left to go? I mean, there's no one. It's dead in the water, in my opinion. I just can't see any reason why anyone would go. Fair. Very fair. But like how is it how is it dead in the water though? Like how could they just put an end to this thing? I don't know. Uh maybe I'm missing something here, but I feel like like if you're not gonna get big names, nobody's gonna watch it. Like we'll tune in and watch the first tournament, maybe for sure, for sure. But I mean, if you don't have viewers, like you don't you don't have a league, you don't have anything. At the start. I guess. But like, how long are you just going to keep pumping money into a dead? I know, business. And like, who's going to watch Phil Mickelson at like, let's say in two years? Yeah, like if he's fifty five or whatever the fuck he is. Yes, the one thing about the whole thing is like, Phil is kind of like on his way out almost of golf in terms of like obviously being competitive. So it just seems like a the wrong guy to be representing that but i did not know that he was part of the whole thing like the plan of it that's what i mean i would just like to know exactly what's going on before i can really form any opinions on it because what we hear is different than what actually happens and that's just the way 
it is in our world. So, and I mean, like that's part of what people's issue with the entire thing is, is like anybody, like you'd catch uh, like media or whatever, the journalist would catch a, a whiff of somebody that was interested in this. And then when they asked them, it would be like, well, I can't talk about it. I signed an NDA. So like you were paid money to not talk about it. And then in the past three days, a lot of those guys have started talking about it. So they're going to have to pay that money back. Like it's just, like, there's a absolute shit storm. Like Phil's got to be in hiding. Like he's going to get fucking murdered. By who? Saudis. <laughs> or whoever else he owes money to. Yeah. It can't be. I don't know. It's not good. Like at all. Like it's, it's wild, so, man. Like this is you a, guys, this is a TV. Do you guys show. like Phil less now? Like, are you gonna stop cheering for Phil because of this, or do you just like whatever? I don't know. Like, I love Phil to an extent. Uh, I always thought there was probably a lot of fakeness with Phil, and I think that has been exposed. Mm-hmm. I heard a story a few years ago that a, a person from Dauphin, like, they won this contest to go golf with Phil. And they like showed up to the first tee and he like showed up in his own cart like 10 minutes late and like walked up and hardly acknowledged that he's playing with these guys and then played them for money and like kicked the shit out of them and took their money money. (laughs) and took their money. And then as soon as like he was just a complete dick the whole round and then uh, as soon as the round was done, he just took off to his car and he was gone. So they like went into the. Like the, they went into the pro shop and the guy was like, how'd the round go? And they're like, well, it was good, except for we won this contest with Phil and like you did. And the, the guy in the pro shop was like, yeah, it happens every round that somebody wins with them. So, I mean, and I mean, like, a, whatever, like, fair enough. Like, yeah, do you like you, I guess, technically don't have an obligation to be an outgoing person. Like, you just have to go there and play is probably what's in your contract. But, Holy shit. But the show that he puts on on TV or way as different. opposed to that, you know what right. I mean? Yeah. I probably, I, I do definitely like him less after this. Just for the fact that he was going to bail out for money. That kind of pissed me off. I I don't really, especially if it was like somebody like a, a young guy that doesn't have very much money and, and doesn't have a 25-year legacy on this tour and like, and the tour, I mean, He's, he's bullshitting himself if he's using the NFT argument that the tour has held back all his money. It's gave him a hundred million dollars and all these sponsors. And then the second he gets offered this money to step out because he doesn't like the way they're being treated for that. He takes it and basically throws the, his employer for the last 30 years under the bus. I don't know. I don't like, I, I don't like his play. I could see it being like a, a Bryson or someone like that, but I mean, like, he might feel that the PGA, he owes the PGA to or nothing, but I mean, we're talking about him right now and everybody in the world knows who Phil Mickelson is because of the PGA. So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, I guess I don't really like hate on somebody for going for money. Like I don't, I can hate on the means that you do it by like if he came out and just said, Hey, I'm getting a massive bag over here. I got a shitload of gambling debts. The mafia is threatening to cut my dick off. I got to go take this. I would <laughs> gladly accept that and support it and go watch whatever he's doing. I think I would too, actually. Well, a lot of people would appreciate that. Everybody, everybody appreciates uh, truth and authenticity. And right, like it's the biggest thing. Um, it is kind of weird to me though. Like, why is this NFT thing such a big deal? Like, what do they know that we don't? There's so much money into it. Well, the NBA's already I made know. like, like, 150 million, and they they profit. They gave like the profit sharing to the players. So right, that's what he's basing his off of. Right, but he's not even asking for that. He just wants complete control. Mm-hmm. He's never asked for a, a let's split anything. He just wants everything, which is what. Yeah. And, and see, again, like it's just a. It's a fucking cancel culture society. Everything is, yeah, and, and is. now he, the rich guy wants too much. Now we got to cancel him. Like there's yeah. a lot of that in all of this. That's a lot of the hate going towards him. <laughs> so, 
for just for the NFT thing though, because as soon as I heard that, uh, that they're taking all the rights to it, I immediately thought of like comparing it to artists and record deals, producers, but it's not because the PGA is the one who films everything. They have their crew there. No, they're not. Who is contractors or what? Well, whatever uh, station they're on that week. Or, yes. Okay. So there are different parts of it for sure. Like it's not like it's Phil recording his own shots and then the PGA taking a cut of that. Like it's all the, the PGA and CBS and, and that it's all their footage. So he shouldn't get a hundred percent of it because I don't believe that he should, they should get a cut of it. They should split it. Right. But uh, they should work something into their contract where the players at least get a portion of the sales. I think you have to be fair in that, in that situation. Mm -hmm. Well, like, again, like the PGA is not a company. They're a nonprofit organization that all the money just gets dispersed to their members, which are the PGA tour players. And he said that he said that, uh, Jay Monahan has like six six hundred million dollars in his slush fund, and he says, "What kind of fucking non non for profit organization has that much money sitting?" Uh, you can't argue that. You can't no, argue no. that. No, but he doesn't. Yeah, who? Yeah, it's just he said that he's throwing all this money over like the. Didn't Phil win that PIP or whatever it is? No, that came out today that he didn't. Oh really? So Tiger did? Yeah. Phil got second. Why would that come out today? That's what I mean. Like, they're, as soon as somebody's down, they just well, kick the shit out of them. It hasn't even come out, apparently. But okay, the PGA's pissed off at Phil for popping out like that. And then it leaked today that he didn't actually win. It was still Tiger. Which I still believe. I still believe that Tiger would have won that. Mm -hmm. Didn't Phil tweet on the last day that he won and got a bunch of stuff from, from that? that? Yeah. So... I mean, whatever. Okay. Well, two things I would say here. It was good that we had some controversy on the show. We haven't got like wound up for a while on the show, but that's what people pay to see. Nobody's paying to see it, but that's, you know, we need to have more arguments like that because we are in generally, in general terms on the same page with a lot of stuff. So it's good. And two, um, it'll be interesting to see how things progress because even our last episode that we had, we were talking about how these guys will never play on the PGA again. That was last week. So in a week from now, it'll be interesting to see how things, how different things are even compared to today. So it seems like it's a uh, evolving story and moving very fast. And so we'll, we'll, we'll be on top of it. Were you going I don't think in his, in his fireside chats. I don't think uh, Polter Stenson and Scott are allowed to play anymore. Right. Do you think Phil the PGA. Come, Do you think Phil will be? I don't think so. No, me either. He go. He'll be able to play the ma the majors, but right. Like, how funny is that? The reigning PGA champion can't even play on the yeah. PGA tour right now. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Okay, well, is that enough for that? Yeah, I would say so. Okay. Well, Rigo's got a a story here. Uh, last week we had. Uh, VJ, we had a story about VJ that Rigo had on uh, and his journey to get to the PGA and how different it, it would look from a lot of American players. And uh, Rory growing up in Northern Ireland, I think he was, right? In Northern mm -hmm. Ireland uh, would be much the same, I think. It's not a whole ton of money up there. Lots of golf, though. And uh, we'll see what Rigo has to say about Rory's journey to the PGA. Yeah, I think, well, we kind of got the idea that we'd do the top 10 in the world. So this will be kind of the... I picked Rory, obviously, because he's my favorite right now. But it's it's kind of a – like, he was a child star, kind of like Tiger. We just didn't know about it over here, I guess. But So he's born in 89, and uh, he's actually born in Hollywood, <laughs> County Northern Down, Ireland. Northern Ireland, yeah. Uh, so he grew up in County Down, which is obviously the world number one ranked public course in the world. Is it number one? Yeah. So – that's a pretty sick place to grow up. Um, his, his father, who was also a professional golfer, introduced him to golf basically before he could walk. And he'd sleep with a golf club when he was a, when he was a kid. Like, he just became obsessed with golf. And at the age of two, he was hitting 40-yard tee shots already at two. At two? Yeah, uh, at the age of two. When did, when did we start golfing? I don't know. I think that, like, probably that age, but we weren't hitting at 40 yards. 
I'd oh, probably be like five it. or six. Um, he joined the Hollywood uh, Golf Club at the age of seven, kept becoming the youngest member. Had his first hole in one at the age of nine. Uh, he had his first in- international win at the age of nine at the World Championship in the nine and ten age group at Durrell in Miami. So obviously they had a bit of funds, yeah, but true. I'll get to that. They, his parents had to work multiple jobs to deal with the training costs that went into golf. Uh, he was training with Michael Michael Bannon, who's actually still his mentor to today, which is pretty sweet. He's kind of kept the same guy that he goes back to since he was um, nine. But yeah. Wow. So that's that's pretty sweet. Um, he was part of Europe's winning team at the Junior Ryder Cup in 2014. Participated in the British Masters in 2005 at the age of 15, which is insane. Uh, Imagine being 15 and playing in a freaking event like that. Good God. Yeah, I don't know. At 16, he became the youngest player to win the West of Ireland Championship in the Irish Close close championship also won the Euro amateur title that that same year in 2007 he turned pro becoming the youngest member to ever earn a European tour card in 2008 and he won the silver medal for the lowest amateur at the open that year also uh, in 2008 he had six top 10 placements and found himself ranked 79th in the world in 2009 he played his first masters finishing tied for 20th and is that Fat Rory? I'm trying to read. Hey, that was Is Fat, that Fat Rory. Rory. Yeah. <laughs> he, he closed off the year playing U.S. Open and PGA Championship and finished at ninth in the official world golf ranking. So it, it happened pretty quick. Like He went from participating in that British Masters in 2005 when he was 15 to becoming ninth in the official world golf rankings four years later, which wow. is insane. And in 2010, so he was he ninth in the world when he was 19. Yeah, like he was Is that good. A record or something? It has to be up there. Holy! Um, he in 2010, Rory won the Quail Hollow Tourney to register his first PGA title, becoming the second youngest to win before his 21st birthday. To Tiger. What to year Tiger. was that Masters <laughs> blow up? I th- think that was. No, I think, it was, I think it was a little later. Was it? I thought it was like 2011 or 2012. It might be. Who's, Either way. He was still Fat Rory, though. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. I think he was Fat Rory for the first few years. <laughs> Finished tied third at the 2010 PGA. Uh, 2011 became the first player ever to score minus 13 at the U.S. Open. And then he secured a $100 million no, $250 million endorsement with Nike in 2013 and signed a multi-year $200 million extension after that one. So he's still, I mean, he's still making that. And then negotiated a second deal for $100 million with TaylorMade after Nike stopped making clubs. So Good God. So the money that he's made just from endorsements alone is absolutely insane. 400 mil. Well, 450, so 550 million he's made Do you for think- endorsements. Now, like, if you sign a deal with TaylorMade, are you paid the full amount up front? Probably not. They would amortize it over the term, probably. Right. So, like, there, did the there'd Ni- be did some Nike sort of signing bonus, likely? Out, like the remaining right. full contract for the probably. equipment? Yeah, probably. Oh. Or they probably negotiated some sort of payout or something. Maybe not the full thing. That wouldn't make a whole lot of sense, but well, I especially if they're like, I wouldn't like yeah, you're no. Nike. Give me all that fucking money. <laughs> sorry, uh, you're sorry Nike. The, reading, <laughs> the reading got pretty tough at the end there. I uh, my writing was getting pretty sloppy by the time I wrote all. <laughs> it's hard to write pages nowadays, eh? Oh yeah. Uh, like if I do a couple paragraphs of writing, my I'm like, oh. yeah, you hang it sore, yeah. Remember writing like scripture in school? Is it, is it called, scripture? called scripture? Not scripture. What's Notes? it called? No, like um, cursive. Cursive. Yeah, yeah. What's scripture? Like the fucking hieroglyphics. Oh. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> hey, you're just saying big words now. <laughs> like, are you talking webdings? No, like they really call webdings. Like scripture is how they wrote like the Bible. 
like the first letters and shit. I don't know. But I'm just me. I don't know. Either way, Rory, Rory had a pretty pretty uh, standard upbringing, I guess. But they, they stressed a lot in those articles about how his parents worked all these jobs. Like, basically, his mom would stay home all day and look after him before he was school age. And then as soon as he as soon as the dad would get home from work, she would basically go work a night shift. Crazy. So, I mean, she wasn't getting a whole lot of sleep Parents. at the time. And it's just, you wonder, I was thinking about this when I was reading it and kind of jotting down notes. You wonder how many parents do the same thing and nothing ever pans out and they just think like, uh, holy no shit. No all, kidding. All of them. All the other parents. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. The, like that Tigris' um, dad yeah. on the, the short game? Mm-hmm. Like he's literally like, I can't afford to put her through school, so this is what we're doing. <laughs> okay, well, I don't know. You're Anyways. a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody hasn't watched the short game, it's a Kingdom uh, highly recommended movie. It's on Netflix. It's basically the only golf movie on Netflix. Um, I was about to go watch uh, Tin Cup. I tried to find Tin Cup on Friday night. And uh, I tracked it down on Amazon and I got super pumped. And then I went to go press play and it was $5. What is that? What is this? I pay a membership and you're still making me pay for movies? Yeah. Fuck I don't know part of the to... membership. Yeah, I don't know. And then like even to deal with shows those. too. Like you, you don't have a subscription to Stack TV, so you can't watch this show. It's the worst. I was it's the pissed. worst. What well, don't show me this then. But, exactly. Uh, very good. I think job. I'm gonna give you five dollars. I pay you already. Yeah. Good job, though, Reg. That was perfect. I love hearing the stories, even of, like, the guys that we already love and then catching something in there and loving them more. Like, the fact that he still uh, has the same has guy helping coach. him. Yeah, yeah, that's phenomenal to me. So who's next, Rigo? No, I haven't decided yet. What? Uh, really? but, so VJ was six all-time on the money list? I think third, wasn't it? I would, would you think? No, I don't know. Third. Before you look it up, what do you think he's at? Rory? Money wise? VJ? Or what yeah. did you ask? Rory or VJ? Yeah, VJ. Because Rigo said that VJ was like number six last week. On the all time? Fifth. That's what he said. Fifth. Fifth? Mm-hmm. 71 million. That's when we we're talking like the money those Rory? guys are getting offered. I don't know. Bet you Rory's 50. I guess that's just your turn number 50? 50 all time or 50 mil? I meant 50 mil. Oh, he's got to be more than that. I don't know, man. Like longevity. Maybe not. Maybe not. He's still pretty young. young. Yeah. He's still pretty young. True. Okay. But like so just what that. Reg said, like he came out in 09 or 08 yeah. on the PGA. That's a hot start going from a uh, 15 year old playing in the British Masters to being ninth in the world four years later. I don't think that there'd be many like that, but you have to remember how much hype he had. He had, he was compared to tiger for about five years and he never lived up to it even close really, but wow. he still had a pretty damn good career. I would say. In ter- yeah. Like in terms of him versus tiger, he didn't fare very well, but he still had, he's probably his top 20 player of all time. E. E. Also, 59, so that means I got to get fifty nine million. We we're running out of time. You do fifty nine mil. Fifty nine. Oh really? And VJ was seventy ish. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, quickly before we get into our segments here, the PGA oh, or what's up? eighth? He's eighth all time. Um. Anybody? Sorry. The, do you have it like pulled up on your screen there? No, that was as of 2020. It just says he was eighth. Fell his career earnings were at 52 at that time. So, is he? He's got to be the highest current, right? Well, I don't know. Phil. Rory Sabatini might be up there. I don't know. What? <laughs> Louis Eustace's got to be close, man. He's finished second at every tournament <laughs> he's ever played in. Chucky Three Sticks has got to have a ton of money too. I wonder how much Poppy's made on the course. Poppy. <laughs> Anyways, um, so 
there was an announcement today about Greg Norman. Speaking of the Saudis, they're coming mm -hmm. out with a 30 for 30 on him. Uh, Drum sent that to the chat earlier. And uh, so that'll be pretty interesting. I think that the, there's a lot of mystique or mysteriousness around Greg Norman and his business dealings and all that kind of stuff. I'm hoping that's kind of released in the documentary, but uh, I didn't know that he was number one in the world for 330 weeks. That was, that was a kind of a wild stat. I had no idea. I think he had the record till Tiger, right? I think so. Seemed like he was second to Tiger in a lot of those categories, which is wild. Yeah, he was, but, I guess he was before pretty, he, he was, was pretty yeah. before our time. Like, I think he was hot till like 95, I don't know, four or five-ish. He was like the gap between Jack and Tiger. But like buckled all the time. <laughs> buckled. <laughs> okay, well, let's Vic, get into the segments here, fellas. Or you got some more stuff for you or what? Vic Hovland's going to be the next week's episode. Ooh. Nice. What number is he in the world? Four. Can't lay past him. Who wants to kick off the segments tonight? I just talked for too long. Uh, yeah, drums, you go. You go ahead, drumsy. Okay, and then I'll go pretty, and then we'll close out with the stroke saver. Mine's pretty quick because I've got, uh, I've got like three things I'm watching like currently, so I don't have anything like new that I've finished to recommend. But I do. I will give a shout out to the, the the couple things I'm watching. I did watch the JFK doc, uh, the new documentary uh, from Oliver on, Stone. It's, on it what? is it is really good. I actually have no idea what it's on. It might be on HBO. Whatever. How that did you is. watch it? The, uh, the computer. Actually, uh, or no? huh? Actually, or no? Did I actually watch it on the computer? No, on the thing. Okay. Uh, but it is it is good. I don't know if there's a lot of new information that comes out, but like diving in to the old information and basically like giving it a twenty twenty one spin of like how oh this literally isn't possible. Blah blah blah. Long thing, but it is very good. Um, the other one I'm watching right now is oh, this. What event. do you think happened, drums? What do you mean? Who killed him? What do you think happened to JFK? Like who got Central him? banks, mafia. Yeah. Uh, I think mafia killed him. CIA, yeah. CIA gave the okay. organized it. Yeah, no. I'm thinking because we think it's the mafia, but whatever we think is wrong usually. So I'm gonna go ahead and rule that out. Fun, fun, fun fact for you. Did you know that uh, Woody Harrelson's dad confessed to killing JFK? Why? Uh, he was just like a hoodlum. Like uh, he, he was in jail and said, oh, I killed JFK. <laughs> just trying to get some like. Just trying to get whatever. Or something. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Sorry, Anyways, the other, the other one we're watching right now. And uh, if you remember a couple weeks ago, I was talking about uh, the Tinder Swindler. Swindler. Yep. It's a terrible yep. one to get out. Uh, but this this show is called Inventing Anna, which is based on a true story uh, about basically the, the same thing as Tinder Swindler. Uh, this girl kind of a girl. this one's a, this one's a girl, and she like infiltrates uh, high society in New York, and then all of this stuff comes out. It's it's I don't know. I don't even know if is I like true? the show. Yeah, it's a true story based on a true story. <laughs> I like but show. I don't even know if I like the show yet because it's it's just like it's all over the place. It's everywhere and like, it, it's tough. But it, I don't know if it's good or it's okay. But it's like a. So what do you? Why are we recommending it? Because it's a very interesting watch, and it's just crazy that I can't believe people just get sucked in on this shit, like. Some person just faking their way through life. Like, I don't understand. I don't understand how people just... You have to watch it to understand, but I don't understand how people get, like, fucked over from that shit. Probably hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people make a living of conning people. Right. I don't get it. And if somebody's conning me right now, you won. But I'm still, <laughs> like, I don't get it. Uh, but it's you. the... Uh, the girl from Ozark, uh, Ruth. She. Oh the, yeah, I like her. Curly head one. Star. Yeah, she's the star. She. I like her. She's really good yeah. actress. 
really good actress and she's probably the main part that i'm still going with it uh but i do want to find out what happens but it is good so uh i will give my full review when when i'm done with it and then the kanye doc unreal i've only watched about the half of the first one so far and it's uh it's pretty it's pretty crazy that some guy that just came across him in an interaction when kanye was 18 and was like Hey, this thought about this guy. I've got to keep filming. So, dude basically gave up his entire life and just continued documenting Kanye for 18 years and everything that came with it. Like, there's like the the crazy Sorry, Kanye shit. Like, it just gets it, it, it's it's awesome. For 18 years. 18 years, he documented like every day of Kanye's life pretty well. Yeah. Could you imagine? I couldn't do that for one freaking day, man. Have somebody follow me around. Be like, get out of here. But yeah, like I like I said, I've only uh, watched the first half of the first episode. Um, but it, it just starts like the the guy filming it is basically what the documentary is. Is the guy filming it was filming up and coming rap acts in Chicago. So it's like a smaller niche market, and everybody was like, "Oh, you got to check out my new song made by." this guy Kanye West you got to check out my new song repeatedly repeatedly so then he meets this guy and he's like there's something more to this guy and then it the next step all of a sudden he's in studio with Jay-Z and producing Jay-Z's albums and then he's uh ambushing Def Jam to like rap in front of executives and shit like that it's just as crazy as you think Kanye is he's he is fucking crazy but he's also like brilliant too, which is hilarious because there's so much shit around Kanye right now too, media wise. Yeah, like, what did he do uh, last week? On the, he went off on that was a Super Bowl day. Well, like, he went ham on Instagram, like he was talking about all some. I mean, right up my alley for sure. But like in terms of the reality or the mainstream is really weird, but well, he's like pissed off that he can't talk to his, he can't even talk to his wife is what he was pissed off about. He had to talk through like her PR staff. He couldn't, right. he couldn't talk to his kids. He couldn't be at his kids uh, birthday party. Now, like, I don't know. There's a lot to it. Cause like, he's definitely fucked. And like there, I think there is like, uh, like some psychological shit there with him, but at the same sure. time, like it's, it's tough to somebody like that's that artistic to bottle that in. Well, I mean, to be that artistic, you have to be crazy. That's all yeah. there is to it. Yep. I actually saw an amazing video with him and uh, it was like a mashup between him and Steve Jobs. And they were talking about how, you know, when you're a kid, you jump on a, ta- a coffee table and somebody says, hey, that's a coffee table. Don't jump on it. And then Kanye basically says how, like, for the next 30 years of your life, there's, like, coffee tables all around. Your walls are made of coffee tables. Like, people stopping you from doing what you want to do. And it, he just seems like such a free, free-minded free spirit and always has been. He's never changed his path from that, which is – and he's made some pretty damn good music, too. Like, I think he'll, he'll, he'll be one of those guys that goes down in history as, like, a, a genius almost in, he already in terms is. of – yeah. So let's. Do you know what that's on, or that was on your same box? Uh, both of them were on Netflix. Uh, the Inventing Anna and uh, the Kanye is on Netflix. Kanye is this too? Interesting. Is it a series? I don't know how many episodes there are, but I was like, well, I'll just watch a bit here, and uh, then it was two hours long. The first episode, <laughs> and then the next episode is two hours long. So I was like, oh, okay. Oh, I'm on my this. last. I'm on my last episode of Yellowstone. I've been putting it off for like. A week i just don't want it to end i just i'm tonight i'm like tonight i'm gonna watch the last episode no tomorrow i will no and reggie you're still on the uh season four sock train hey yeah yeah i don't like it Dell backed you up the, on that one the one thing that uh about that is like you guys kind of had it in my head that it was going to be shitty so my expectations were really low so it was i was fine with it other than all the horse spinning and shit like that but uh man we didn't touch on the uh king golf small town tour but that's okay there's not much to talk about we have we had 20 teams that are interested 
there's going to be 10 that get a spot. Don't know how we're going to decide that yet, but uh, it's for another day. So thanks to everybody who's reached out. I think it's going to be an awesome time and uh, lots to come. So two pina coladas tonight. I got in shit last time from Rigo for going too long. Uh, so I'm going to keep this one fairly short. Maybe not. Who knows? We say that every time, but uh, we'll see what happens here. So tonight is, uh, as I don't have to tell you this, there is some inflation in the world right now. Gas is $1.50. Um, Hydro is going up through the roof. Food costs are through the roof. Grocery bills, everything. I mean, this is we're in a hyperinflation right now. So what tonight is going to be about is if you have any extra money, um, this is what I would recommend putting it into. It's not financial advice. Uh, if you want to keep your money safe, keep it in the banks where it's uh, untouchable, as they say. But uh, so that's that. Obvious, before I get started as, as well is obviously land and real estate is at the top of this list. I mean, they're, they're not making any more land on this planet anyways. So that's number one. But this is for people who don't have the money to put into land. Okay. So five things. The fifth one is actually golf related, believe it or not. And that's Scotty Cameron's. So when you're looking for things to park your cash, because with cash right now, if you had 10,000 bucks sitting in a GIC earning 1%, you're actually losing about 7% that they say per month. So that's a not ideal. You don't want to keep any money where you're losing because of inflation, right? If things cost more, your dollar goes less of a way and you get less out of it. So you're losing 7%, keeping it in there. And uh, so these are a few things you can buy. So park your money, get some Scotty Camerons if you have, because one thing I would recommend is that just in case you don't want to sell it or the market goes down for it, at least you still have a putter there, right? Like you have something physical that you can use. Worst case scenario, if the markets for Scotty Camerons happen to crash, you still have a putter. So I looked on eBay today. There's probably about 50 to 100 Scotties sold today on eBay. And they go for 500 to 10,000 bucks. So that's just kind of where the market is. That's what you want. You want people buying and selling. You want demand for it and something reasonable. Number four, sports cards. I don't want to get too far into this, but it's something that I've been investing in for a couple of years, several years, maybe since I was like 10 actually, but not truly investing in it, collecting. Um, but my suggestion for this would be the same kind of thing. If you want to park your money somewhere, find your favorite athlete on the world, maybe Tiger Woods, maybe Connor McDavid, buy some cards, buy some autograph stuff. If the market collapses, at least you have something that you like and you cherish, right? That's kind of the point of this whole thing. Um, number three is some extra supplies. Uh, this one's going to be big, I think, with inflation, with the supply chain stuff. Um, next time you're at the store, just grab a couple things that you need. Uh, Stuff that you're going to use. Maybe it's an extra bottle of ketchup because this month it's four dollars, and two months it could be seven dollars. So you're, you know, you're actually winning in the sense that you saved three dollars. That's that's a gain in your life, right? So extra supplies, food, uh, toilet paper, all the stuff. Just you don't need to go crazy on it. Just grab a couple things extra when you're at the store. Uh, number two, Bitcoin slash crypto. You guys know this, uh, Bitcoin going to be around in a thousand years from now uh as people are getting in every day to it and uh the market it's going to be a global reserve currency one day so why not get into it even if it's a hundred dollars two hundred dollars just get something and learn how to use it and get your feet wet in it um if you are if you're listening to the show and want to try this i actually have a link to a new exchange called newton it's a canadian exchange and uh, we each get 25 bucks if you use it. So you get 25 extra Bitcoin with a hundred dollar purchase. So hit me up if you want that. And uh, number one. Oh, I don't even know where it went. Silver. I had a silver coin around here, but she's, oh, there it is. This is from 1888. Silver coin. Silver over gold? Absolutely. Why? Why you ask? Good yeah. question, drums. Gold is the one that's hyped up for sure. But silver is absolutely the most undervalued asset on this planet. But it's not even close. 
So silver hit its all-time high in 1980, uh, $50 an ounce. It's now $25 an ounce. If you think about every other asset on the planet since 1980, it's gone like straight up, basically. Everything is appreciated in value. Houses, land, uh, gold, Bitcoin went from $10 to 40,000, everything. But silver stuck at $25. And there's a reason for that. One, uh, you can actually, if you had an ounce of gold and an ounce of silver, one costs 25, one costs like 1800. So you could get 79 ounces of gold, 79 coins for one gold coin. And you're probably thinking like gold's got to be worth a lot more, but it's not. Silver has way more utility. They use it in electronics. They use it in uh, medicine. They use it in basically everything. Yeah, but what do you mean? Like if you have an ounce of gold and an ounce of silver, your gold still worth more. It's worth more for sure. But I mean, and I would, I would argue that silver is va- like it has more value than gold. Yeah. But so I'm not making, a, I'm not, I'm not making a battery to use, oh, but the demand for silver is going to be through. Like what I'm saying is I believe that silver is on par one-to-one should be valued equal to gold or more. And right now you could get 80 of these for one gold coin. Why? So what's a better investment? Well, Why, what? one, the single thing. No. Well, well, what are you gonna, if I, if, why would, if you, want, why would you want 25 of one thing if you can just have one that's equal? Because if it, if it, when it's fairly valued, you're going to have 80 times what you put into it. You're going to have 80 times $25 when yeah, it's but fairly valued. It's never been equal value. Right, because it's been suppressed for 150 years to take your eyes off of the, mon- the monetary system and the fiat. All right. That's why. If, if everybody went out and bought one of these tomorrow, it'd be the end of market manipulation. So that's silver. The most undervalued asset on the planet and it's not even close. So there you go. For anybody out there who has a couple grand and want to buy a couple things to get out of your GIC, there's some suggestions for you. Boom. I tried to keep it short. Sorry, Rigo. Let's get back to golf. So if you had a Scotty Cameron putter, and you had a putt to make the championship flight in the Tamarack, and you missed it. And you threw a ball up and hit it 300 yards with the Scotty Cameron putter. Is it still worth $500? Mm-hmm. If it's just yeah, a, don't, don't put it in your description. If it's bent just a little bit to where the point where I haven't used it for two years, but would it still have value to somebody? I wonder? Like the face the is still in good shape. Is, no, good. I'm, I'm t- I know. I know what you're saying. I, it's I always good. think about buying Scotties, but it's good quality, not very good quality on eBay. So, would find, you say find things that hold their value and find things that are undervalued? And silver is absolutely the most undervalued. Because m- what I'm saying, drums, is this is actually worth more. Forget about price, because price means nothing. It doesn't right now. The world is so manipulated to keep your eyes off of this thing that it's all bullshit. So in terms of actual utility and value, silver is worth as much as gold and you can get 80 of them for the price. No. Yeah, for the price of one ounce of gold, 80 80 ounces of silver. Rigo, hit us with some, how are we going to save some strokes tonight, baby? It's not really, it's just a general tip. Um, (laughs) Every practice time. your short game more no like it's just it's generalized it's not just okay. specific to one thing gotcha practice your short game more everybody's always on the range grinding out for like if they get if you get a spare minute to go practice golf you grab like two buckets of balls and go to the range and nobody ever worse. just nobody else yeah you want to go out and hit drivers and you want to go hit irons like nobody where do you where do you think you save the most strokes in a, in a round of golf like Parking lot. Actually save strokes. <laughs> Parking, Parking lot. lot. <laughs> but I mean, like, you're probably always going to have the one or two or three or four bad shots off the tee or from the fairway. You're never going to be perfect from there if you're not a professional. But a lot of the times, guys miss greens. Like, like a, a high handicapper might only hit a few greens a day. So, I mean, your short game is going to be tested 15 times if you only hit three greens, right? And nobody ever practices their short game. They just go to the range and and work on the same shit every time they get a chance. Where I don't know, this kind of 
I was talking to Fox about it. We were, we were talking about four footers actually. And we were talking like, how many four footers do you miss around? And I honestly probably miss like, Oh, I don't know. Two or three per round, I would say, which is insane, but it's a reality. And he said, okay, so you missed, let's say two to three, four footers or five footers. He said, how often do you practice four footers on the putting green? Maybe once a summer, <laughs> like yeah. if I'm being honest, but you have one, like you probably have eight of those per round, I would say. Mm -hmm. Right. But you just never practice them. Cause that's not what you're really wired to do. Everybody always just says, go hit range balls and figure stuff out there. But you never practice your short game. You never practice four foot putts. You just don't practice your short game. Cause you just, I don't know, but you could save so many strokes just working on it, you know? So are you, is this like a tip for before a round or just like in general? Overall? Okay. In, in general, probably both be, though too, right? And before yeah. a round. Yeah. hundred percent. And yeah, I'll save that for another day. But basically when, when you're on the putting green, don't just like take four balls and just start whacking putts. Like actually try to get a feel for the speed of the greens, the roll of the greens, like stuff like that. But, um, practice short game it, it you'd be amazed that like i i know for a fact that i i went through like two or two years when i could hardly get off the tee and i could hardly hit in the irons because i was just i had like basically the full swing yips for two years but i still <laughs> found a way to get around the course because of my short game yeah, like i still true. found a way to score good i mean you can still have a good round even if you hit the ball like shit if your short game's good and nobody Nobody really looks into that. It's kind of crazy, actually. Um, would you also suggest, like, because uh, I'm guilty of this myself. If I go to the range 20 times in a summer, I go to the practice green zero times. But I think that a lot of guys could, including myself, although I'm in shit a lot of times on the course, so I've, I've had enough practice with that just by playing. But one of the things that, uh, like, just going along with the short game stuff is is practicing kind of around the greens with different lies and instead of, like, perfectly um, placing your lie. Because when you're in a match or a tournament, man, it's such a big difference if you can move your ball in the rough or you have to hit it as it is. I was just going to say that. That's <laughs> Yeah. It's pra practice 100%. with a purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's a difference between practicing and hitting balls. Like, I know if you're playing with buddies that say fluff in the rough or if it's, like, wet, like, I mean, if your short game's good enough, getting to fluff it up every time, I mean, Whew. there really is no – I mean, I'm, I shouldn't say there's no challenge, but, there, I mean, it's just a, it's two different sports, really, fluffing yeah. in the rough and not. It absolutely is. That's something that's really not talked about that much in the golf world is – it's totally different if you can fluff your ball in the rough. <laughs> well, just it's it's crazy how much a lie can determine how how well you do. So a crazy thing actually, um, on that note, like at Dauphin Lake now, on men's nights, everybody can fluff in the rough. What? But the reason they did that is because so many guys cheat and yeah. do it anyways that uh, they just eliminated it. But I still don't agree with it. And then no. you you play in the Gary Brandon and guys do it. And it's kind of like, man, I'm not doing that. I, I won't do that. So yeah, I know I now know. I'm at a disadvantage, but I'm also not going to call you on it because I don't give a shit, but it's like, that's not golf, man. I, I don't know. I don't like it. I'm but, with you, brother. Okay. No, like final it. thing there, because probably the majority of people listening to this, including myself, know how important the short game is. But how do you convince somebody to actually get out there and do it? Because that's a totally different thing. Are you just doing this to put it at the top of people's minds? Or like, do you have some sort of recommendation for getting people to actually do it? Because myself, I don't know. Every time I want to go out and practice, I automatically go to the range. But what do I do to not do that? But that's what I'm saying is just that if you develop a good enough short game, it's going to save you a lot more strokes than finding your swing on the range will do. It will in the long for, run, for sure. For us, the problem is there's no real good practice facilities Greens. in Brandon. Yeah. That's I mean, like, is horrible. No, but at... Um, Mulligans. Mulligans, yeah. Mulligans. Like, it's, even it's so. a pretty decent one. Like, 
you can get different lies. You can get different angles. Yeah, coming out true. Greens and For everything. chipping and stuff, it is actually really good. Yeah. The putting green isn't great. Which is, it's going to be different at every course anyway. So, like, that's up to the yeah. uh, the practice green itself to get you dialed for the putting. But, you're, you're ch- like, I think more so what Reg is saying, like, you're, you're chipping. If you can chip it up to the inside six, eight feet, you're still going to have a better chance of yeah, eventually feeling out the, the greens as opposed to just coming in wild card ripping <laughs> ripping yeah. chips past pins and stuff well yeah yeah and yeah it's just i don't know short game's so 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 underrated in golf like i mean it's, and like it's, it's incredible it's so, nobody practices it it's so easy to go and hit balls and just get into a zone and you're all of a sudden you're half your half your bucket's gone and all you've hit is one club and it's yeah so no, like it makes sense. Make sure you practice. One thing that I have changed, you go, and this this ties into what you were talking about actually in terms of the warm up, is one thing that I've actually surprisingly done consistently over the last two years probably is do the same kind of uh, practice or I guess pre round routine on the putting green, um, and like you said, don't hit, don't just go up there and hit at some random putts. Like and Drum said, practice with a purpose. But I got like a routine from uh, Zen Zen putting, I think it's called. So I'll give that to you, and you can talk about it on there. But it 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 goes through what you should be working on to get the speed, to get to the feel. Uh, don't work on ten footers because uh, there's really nothing to gain from that because you're not going to make everyone, and there's really you know. Um, so I'll send you that. It's actually really good, and that's something that I have been using, especially in competitive rounds is I go through that routine on the putting green and it's made a huge difference in my putting game, especially. Definitely. Uh, one, this is last and then we'll, we'll wrap the episode up, but Fox, we we're talking about the range too. And he said that uh, Hank Haney said in the interview, maybe with no laying up or maybe somewhere it was, it was on one of those podcasts anyways. And uh, he said that tiger is the worst range to course player that he's ever coached and ever seen what the hell does that mean he never ever ever misses a shot on the range ever oh mm. really like he said and he's, he's the never, worst he said some of the shots on the that, course shots that tigers hit on the course he said he's never seen him hit on the range ever <laughs> and he said he actually had first tee jitters like he would just be absolutely striping on the range and then go to the first tee and just hit an absolutely wild shot. That's one thing I've always wondered with Tiger is like, That's he golf, seems baby. so cool and calm under the, because everywhere he's gone for the last 30 years has been a complete circus. Since he's fans. four years old. And, you know, I, I always wondered if he got used to that or just didn't care, but I'm, I'm glad you said that because I always wondered like, how does he deal with that kind of stuff? Well, he I says th- the worst range the course player he's ever seen. <laughs> I, th- I think it's pretty evident in like his track history of women and like, I won't say substance abuse, but like he, he had issues like that would probably right. all Carry be tied, t- tied back yeah. into being in the spotlight and being under a microscope since you're six. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Another Anyways, let's, episode let's down, wrap this baby number 72. Up, yeah. Quickly, last question of the night. Who should we get on for episode 100 in, in 28 episodes from now? Oh, I did have one. I don't know, but we're going to find a couple people that will come on and uh, talk to them. But I did want to say, we were talking about Snoop last week and how he's like the coolest motherfucker around. Yeah. Let's come back next week with our each of our top five coolest motherfuckers of all time. Deal. Coolest? Coolest motherfuckers. Maybe three. Drums. I can't even think of five. Drums, I'm going to Nashville spring break. Who? Guess who's in Nashville on the Saturday? Snoop. No. <laughs> yeah. You got to go. He's playing, he's playing nationwide. You got to go. Bridgestone. <laughs> <laughs> Today I just... Uh, for whatever reason, I just looked up Vegas Axe and uh, Usher's there in like oh, October, Usher, baby. like doing a residency. And I'm like, that would be sick. That might be my ticket to go. Yeah. Let's do it. What? 
with that, let's uh, let's wrap this one up. This might be a long one again, but uh, it's probably the longest yet. I would say it, it might be. It might be pretty. And uh, we'll again, nice and short. <laughs> again, me, me and Jor like to argue. I think that's pretty evident. Uh, so apologies to Reg for for doing that again. I think we're just gonna have a an end segment every episode where we apologize to Reg for, for hey, getting getting hey, going. We did nothing wrong to Regal. The world needs more debates. That's what you need to do. You can't just be pigeon and hold into one opinion. Yeah, if you want the kingdom to get canceled. What did we do? We didn't canceled. say nothing. Be uncancelable. <laughs> We're a long ways from being uncancelable. No, as a person though, like what's gonna Man, happen to you? Touché. That's what I'm saying. All this stuff I've been looking, I Googled the top ten just to see who Are I could still do next alive? week. Yeah. Okay. And all these guys, like it's like, yeah, yeah. He was world number one for like 40 weeks, 46 weeks, 58 weeks. <laughs> Tiger Woods. <laughs> A total of 683 weeks. <laughs> That's, That's why we're here. That's why we're here, yep. boys. Well, exactly. That's right. we're here. Okay. We're out of here. Let's get uh, let's talk to you guys later. wrapped up. Talk to you later. Love you. Peace. Peace, Love you boys.